Good morning, folks. We're going to start today on NASA's JPL orbital diagram for Ceres 1. It's the largest asteroid belt body, allowing us to track the biggest objects in the system here. And a good deal of them are lining up in geocentric and heliocentric conjunctions right now. I'm now going to drop the ISON trajectory over that. Not that there is much of anything left, but that was never the main point of ISON, especially because anything left now is 45 million miles north of our North Pole. And recall that I said the best chance for seeing ISON related meteors was January 15th, when we crossed the incoming trajectory, but that there was a minute chance that ISON crashed into or perturbed some smaller rocks on its way through the asteroid belt, and that if there would be more than just that light dusting on the 15th, made for a pretty show, it would have to be around the days before the 15th, and potentially from the night side where ISON's incoming trajectory came in relevant to Earth's position. As you imagine where the planets are at this moment, I want you to also remember that the moon was new two days ago, and so if we looked from behind, it would be swinging left towards Mercury. This is us zooming in behind the Earth, with ISON's incoming trajectory behind us, where one would guess those meteors would come rather than the dayside impacts of any debris that happened to circle the sun. Just so happens that a nightside asteroid became a meteor last night. The timing for when we said to look for ice on debris back there is likely just a coincidence as rocks hit our atmosphere every day, but that's a really fun coincidence. Got a great video and article linked about Phobos in the recent ESA flyby. Monolith fans, I was excited as you are, but there's no mention of the potential alien building. I'd like to say that first, I'm glad the climate scientists who got stuck in the ice trying to prove global warming are alright. Now Chris Turney, their leader. You gotta decide what to make of your heating-only propaganda. We all know methane is way worse for the atmosphere than CO2. Channel vets know the major hydrate reports at the ocean floor and the troubling releases are coming in spades. This paper proves that the methane upticks are a natural process, not exacerbated by anything human-driven. Systems converging, dropping major snow. It's about four to six inches outside my home, and I believe those east of me are getting it a lot worse, with some areas more than double my high estimate for what's sitting out on my deck. It is being pushed offshore at the moment by a strong clockwise pushing high pressure system. It's moving to the east. Let's come to the global wind map and see the next storm crossing the Pacific. Will I this one incoming? Anyone from Australia willing to weather share the temperature changes from the last few days given this southern chill sweeping in now? Looking now at Africa and Madagascar, where precipitation totals from the cyclone and shear are pretty telling of the breadth of the storm, now set to depart. Another low cresting Europe? Nah. <laughs> but seriously, folks, the storm surge and flood warnings went out hours ago. Please pay attention to the high winds as well. Let's kick it to space weather. Took two gamma bursts last night from Virgo and from the Boots constellation. Solar flaring has died down a skosh. The departing spots appear to retain their complexity as they turn for the limb. And if they do manage to pop again on departure, there's a good chance for polar radiation storms with Earth's magnetic connection to the sun almost perfectly on those spots. Incoming monsters, no big flaring just yet. We see deep umbral cores and strong magnetic power. It would strain credulity to imagine this sands a delta class and will be remembered as one of the biggest spots of the cycle even if she goes to sleep. Solar wind speed is dropping. Corona hole stream may be ending now. The geomagnetic instability is fading as well, and thankfully, so is the electron flux. 36 hours, we saw 500 to 5,000 times increase in near Earth energy, depending on how powerful of an electron you were looking for. Add that space energy, planetary positions, to the corona hole situation. The hole appeared to be over, especially with the field closure. But the opening actually spans across the disk and may be popping back open. The red incomers north and south represent the ending stage for this extended watch to start the year. The southern opening is of moderate power, but the northern hole is of major, major power. Swinging in now on the top left, visibly darker. Watch score today is B+. Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.